G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I'm happy today to bring you another one in my little animal doll series. And we have a little fox here. This little girl is very easy to make. She's made just the same as my, my little bunny and my little bear. If you would like to make her along with me, you simply click on the link in the description below, download your free pattern templates, and I'm gonna take you through it every single step of the way. So we're going to start with the body of this little doll today. Now all of my little animal dolls have the same body pattern. They're all made up in the same way. So we start off with, I'm using a quilting cotton fabric for this little doll. And I just find that if you interface with a fusible woven interfacing, which I always do with all of my dolls, you get a nice weighted fabric, which gives us a little doll who has some strength uh, her shape is held really well and actually makes it quite easy to sew up and also means that she can handle lots of loving and lots of adventures with their, with their little owner. So first of all you need your two torso pieces. So two torso pieces which are interfaced and your two leg pieces. You've also got your little arms and you need four of those. Two are reversed. And you can see that mine are interfaced. Now on the, on the little arms, I actually use a, a set of forceps for turning these little arms, turning them the right way out once they're sewn. If you don't have any specialty turning tools or forceps or anything like that, perhaps don't interface the little arm sections. It just will make it a little bit easier to turn those through because they are quite fine um, and, and they can be a bit tricky to turn through. So moving on, the fabrics that I've chosen, we do sew in this way because this little doll is going to have a little skirt and a little neck ruffle, which I'm going to show you how to make. We choose the fabrics this way. We choose a fabric for the, the little bottom leg section and the arms, and it's the same fabric for both. And then we choose a fabric for the torso, which will also be what you want for the little dress. So for the little skirt and the little neck ruffle. That way when our doll is all put together, we have this look of a little dress without too much work. So once you've got that and your fabrics are chosen, I've pinned these together and cut them out. So all I've done is just taken out the, the bottom and top pins here, just so that I don't have to open them all the way out. And the first thing that we do is to sew the top front to the top bottom across straight across here now I always sew my little dolls twice so one line of stitching right over the top of the other and that's just for strength my stitch length is around about a two and my seam allowance throughout this little body is only quite tiny it's only around about four millimeters so stitch that one twice on the machine and then the same with the front to the back you can, of course, unpin all of this and do them as separate pieces. I just find it's easier because they're already pinned. And then I will sew that one across twice also. Now that I have stitched those two seams, we have a full pattern piece you can see there of the whole body, front and back. And I've also given that a little press. So from here, the next thing we do is to sew up the full body all the way around. Now this little doll has little inset arms for absolute strength of that arm being connected. I can show you there on the little, little bunny here. You can see that her arms are actually sewn into like a little box, little box seam like you would on the bottom of a bag, but they're very, very strong. They are put in after we have sewn up the rest of the doll. So the stitch that we're going to do, the seam we're going to sew, we're going to match up these two little side seams now. And we're going to sew from the top of the neck, just this little section here. And then we're going to leave this little square section open and we're going to sew all of the way around up until this side, leave our little square section open and just sew that little neck section there. Again, I sew that seam twice and it is the same seam allowance as this one. You can see now that my whole body pieces are sewn together. See there, the little neck section. I've left that little square open and have gone all the way around the body 
and done the same on the other side. So what I do now, even though it's a very tiny seam, because we want really nice rounded finishes to our little dial on the little arms and legs and also in this little crotch area. If you have pinking shears, this is one of the tools that I would suggest. I don't suggest unnecessary tools to you, but a very good pair of pinking shears is marvellous for making uh, little 3D dolls and so on because it's just a really quick way to notch your seams. So just for example, on your very obvious curves, we just go around and I'm going to actually go around the whole doll. The straight sections don't matter so much but definitely up through these curves and we'll do the same on the arms. It just gives you a lovely rounded finish and makes it easier to turn through. You can see that I've just notched those little curve areas. Now, of course, if you don't have pinking shears, just use your little tiny scissors and snip little notches into those seams just so we, get a, we just get a lovely curve. So the next stage is, here's where our little arms are going to be inserted. So we're going to make a little box corner. First of all, just pop your fingers inside the little neck there and we just flatten out that seam on the top of the shoulder. It's just like a little finger press and we do the same with the little one leading up here. And then you'll see that what we're going to do is pull the sides out to match up, to match up those seams. I hope you can see that. Match up those two seams there and I'm going to just use one of my little clips, which are very, very useful for this. And we're just going to clip those two seams together. We're not ready to put our little arms in yet because if we haven't made them, but I find that if I do that on both sides and I let it sit there while I'm getting my little arms ready, then when I go to pop them into that seam, they're, they're nice and flattened out. So I do that with both sides and then we move on to getting our little arms ready. You can see those little seams met up and a straight line across there. That's how we're going to sew them across. So we can just pop that one aside and then we move on to our little arms. So as you can see, I've already made up a little arm. So I'm gonna be demonstrating on this one just for the sake of time. So I generally just use my little clips in a couple of places and I make sure that particularly those ends are nicely met up. And then it's simply a matter of sewing. We leave the top open and we just sew that same little three to four millimeter seam allowance all the way around two times. And then we just turn that one through. I also, after I've sewn that one, I use my pinking shears again on those curves. Again, just use your little tiny scissors and notch those edges if you don't have those. I'm going to be using, this is what I was talking about before, I'm gonna be using my hemostats, forceps, some people call them, to turn that piece through. If you don't have those, it can be a bit tricky. So like I said earlier, perhaps don't interface your little arm pieces, then it's a bit easier to turn. So I'm gonna sew that up on the machine now you can see I've sewn up that little arm now and I have also used my pinking shears again all the way around just to make that curve turn out very easily. Now is where I can show you where these little forceps come in very, very handy. And they're not just handy for turning, so obviously I can lock the end there and I can give my little arm a little wiggle. Just ease it over that top part and you can see that it will just push all the way through. Unlock my forceps and then that little arm is turned through. So you can see that is quite a narrow little arm. Perhaps you haven't put interfacing on yours if you don't have forceps. You can see it's quite easy though if you do have these. Now these are probably the most used tool in my toolbox. I have them in a couple of sizes for stuffing and turning longer sections. Um, if you're going to be making little dolls and, and cloth animals and so on, they really are a tool I would recommend that you get for your toolkit and they're available at most big craft 
and sewing outlets now because they're very widely used for exactly this. So now that it's turned through, we just roll out those seams just between fingers and thumbs just so we've got a lovely curve and you can see because we've clipped those curves we have got a lovely little curved arm there. So roll those all out and then we stuff that little arm and again I'm using my my little forceps you can see how much easier it is because that is a little tiny opening and we start with little pieces if you don't have forceps you can just use uh, perhaps a knitting needle or chopsticks this just makes the job really easy you can find that you really can pack it in so you can't feel that but you can see that it's very firm and that'll hold its shape hopefully for years and years so with lots of hand holding from little ease. So we really pack that first one in. We want that really, really tight. And we keep adding, and just little pieces. Try and put a big piece in there and you'll end up with lumps and we want a nice smooth little arm. And you just work your way down and we're gonna fill that little arm right up until around about probably a centimeter and a half from the top. The reason for that is we want a little bit of room for when we sew that little arm into that little box corner that the arm just has a nice natural fall to it. We want that when we pick up little bunny that she's, she's lovely and soft and yielding and if you stuff right up tight to the edge of course you'll end up with this effect and that's really not what we're after. So about, feel right up to about, about a centimetre and a half from the top. Now I have both little arms filled and you can see that I've just stitched across the top just to close that opening. It just makes it easier, easier for us to manage and you can see that they're quite firm. So now we come to popping them in. Now at this point our little body doesn't have a front or a back because they're both exactly the same. But what we do have to do is make sure that our little arms are put in and both going in the same direction and that will then be our front. So as I showed you before, we've had our little body sitting there with our little clips on. So that's nicely flattened out and ready for us to pop that in. So we're going to pop that little arm inside the neck area. And you're going to find that it's just going to fit and it can take a bit of wiggling. And we want to pop it between those two layers. Now here's where your forceps can come in handy too because you can reach in there and grab the end of your little arm and pulling through and all we want is that that little arm gets sewn straight into that little seam and it seems a little fiddly but I have worked on this pattern for a long time to work out the easiest way for you to add arms because often we use a a button joint and just stitching arms on and I sent one of these little bunnies to my granddaughter to try and test it for loving and she is six years old and she in the first little bunny was button jointed on the arms and she loved the little arms right off <laughs> so I thought well that's not going to work so I have worked out this and this works really well. This is a forever arm. This is never coming out. So you can see that that little arm actually fits exactly across that little space. Just make sure it's all beautifully lined up and that your edges are definitely in there. Your arm is definitely secure. And then we're gonna take that back to the machine and just stitch across that seam, straight across that shoulder. And we're going to go, I generally sew across four times just to make absolutely sure. And there we go, that little arm is securely sewn in to that little box corner. You can see there. And so we're just going to repeat with the second arm. But we're going to make absolutely sure that as we put that little arm in, that our little hand is curving to the front, the same direction as the other one. So that one is just gonna be popped in 
can see that both arms are pointing towards the front. If we turned it this way, then she would be going backwards with one of the arms. So we're going to just repeat exactly the same thing with this little arm into that shoulder. So now we have both arms in, in those little shoulder box corners, and both of the little arms are facing the same way. Now I've taken my little forceps again, and I've away, already tucked one of the little legs up. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Again, these little legs are a little bit thicker than the arms, so you won't find those too hard to turn through with the interfacing on. Pop that one all the way up. You can see why it's easier with forceps. And then we're going to just reach in and find those. The little arms will turn through. I'll try and find the little legs. They're in there somewhere. And we can pull the whole thing through. These parts are always a little fiddly. They're fiddly for everyone, I can assure you. And we'll just very carefully turn that little body all the way through. You can see we have beautiful little box corner shoulders. And that, my friends, is the safest, strongest way to sew in a little arm and still keep all that lovely flexibility, flexibility. So while it seems a little bit fiddly, trust me, of all of the methods, this one's probably the easiest. And you also never have to worry about those little arms falling off, which is a bit of a horror story. So now I just take my knitting needle and because I've notched those, all those curves with my pinking shears, or perhaps you've done it just with your little scissors, I'm able to push those, those little curves out. I've got lovely rounded edges there. I'm just going to go through the whole body and push out all of the seams. I then go around, as I always do, and roll all those seams out. I know that we're going to be filling it and that's going to push them out, but I just find this this helps with the stuffing and it helps keep the stuffing nice and even too. Now I'm going to do that all the way around and I actually give that section just a light press but I do use a protective cloth. Just give it a light press um, because we're going to put some little markings in to see where our legs will fold. I've given this little one a little press, you can see so this section is nice and flat. The reason for that is we're going to mark in our little our little leg bends. We need to sew a little seam across there. In your pattern pieces that you will have downloaded, I have given you, I've made you a little leg bend guide. Okay, and that's, you don't cut that out of a piece of material. That's cut it in a little, I, I like to put it on a little piece of uh, lightweight cardboard. And you can see that we're going to, just going to pop that one on there, right on that inner crotch seam. And you can line it up across the top. And of course you've done lovely straight sewing across your torso there. And you can see make sure that it's all lined up and it's all the same either side and you can draw in your two lines. I just thought that would make it easier for you all and I actually, I'm quite a perfectionist in that way, I want it to be exactly the same on both sides so that's probably more for me than you. So when I like to use just a little wax coloured pencil that's just a little bit deeper than the, the shade of the fabric, those uh, two little seams we're going to sew in on the machine. Again, I'm going to sew them twice. We're not going to do that now. We're first going to fill the legs. But the reason why we have drawn them on now is because we still have everything nice and flat um, and we get a nice accurate marking. So I'm going to pop that one aside. And now we're just going to fill those little legs. And again, I'm going to be using my forceps and we're going to fill the little legs in exactly the same way that we did the little arms, just with little pieces, really pack them really, really firm. Again, you can see with the little bunny here, her legs are really, really firm there. And we're going to do that all the way up to the top. And just as we did with the, the little arms where we left, probably about a centimetre and a half, where we kept it quite nice and soft, that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to fill to about here, nice and firm, leave about a centimetre and a half because we're going to 
be popping that one on, on, under the machine. And we want that when that seam is sewn, that they're still nice and flexible so she can sit down and she's not all stiff. Also, now that you can see that the body is put together like that, this is, section of the video is going to be used for all of my animal dolls. So perhaps you're making my little fox, perhaps you're making a little boy. And if you're making my little teddy bear doll, um, obviously perhaps he won't be wearing a dress. There will be lots and lots of videos for you to make different clothing for them. So you can see that you piece your body and your legs to suit. If you were putting, making a little bear, because there will be a little bear in the series, your little bear might be wearing, you might choose to dress him in overalls and you would choose this fabric print to suit being a little undershirt. So you can see that you can mix and match them any way you like. But this section of the video is going to be used for all of my little doll videos because the body is constructed the same way every time. So don't be concerned if you see that the fabrics change throughout the video. Okay, so now we're just going to fill those little legs, both sides. I have both of those little legs filled nice and firm now. You can see here that along that little line that we've already drawn, I've just popped a pin in to line up exactly with that line because now we're going to take this little doll to the machine and we're going to stitch twice straight over the top of each other to make that little leg bend. So you can see there, because I've left enough room without stuffing, I'm able to make that nice and flat, which also means it will be easy to pop it under the machine. I just use a thread that's quite matching, so it'd be quite hidden. It, the thread, that seam is hidden in the, in the leg bend anyway. So just two rows of stitching right on top of each other will secure those legs. So our little leg seams are done, so we've got a nice little bend there with those legs. So now next, we just continue to fill this little body. Now I've taken Bunny's skirt off here so that you can see how we pack that body nice and firm. It really is quite solid all the way to the top. When you're filling, make sure that you're really filling out this whole shoulder section here so that it holds out our little arms nicely. So just as firm as you can manage. Again, I'm going to be using my, my little forcep, my larger forceps this time and popping my stuffing in. Make sure that you get down into all of those little corners. Take your time. If you use smaller pieces, you'll be able to get those little corners filled and then you can increase the size of your pieces. You'll be surprised how much these little animal dolls can eat uh, with the polyester filling. Um, but just keep going because um, we do need a nice firm packed body. It's just the doll has a longer life um, and holds its shape beautifully over the years. So I'm going to keep on going until I'm filled right up to the top here and then I'm going to show you a, a little trick at the top to help you with filling out those shoulders. So now I've got that little body filled right up to the top and right up to the neck there you see. Now it's extremely important that this section here, the shoulders here, and this whole neck section is really firm. The reason for that is of course the doll looks better, but also because we're going to be sewing on our little head and the more firm this is, the easier it is for you to sew that head on. There's nothing worse than trying to sew body parts of little dolls together when they're softly filled. It's just really difficult and in fact, when they're stuffed are very firm, it's actually very, very easy. So there's a little trick. Here's when the secret tips come out. Um, because I've spent years doing this and filling little bodies, I'm always after an easier way to do it, a better way to do it um, to get. Now you find that polyester filling, you probably already discovered, it, it wants to pop out back at you all the time, especially when you're filling something like this, it wants to escape back out. Here's where the, the little trick comes in. This is a felting needle. It's a wool felting needle. It's for doing uh, a felting, well, little felted animals and figures and all that sort of thing. It, what it does is that it, it compacts fibres. Generally, it's used for compacting wool fibres, but I found, just by accident, that of course we can use it to pack our little poly fibres, which means with very little effort, you can see there, 
Mind your fingers though, because these have razor sharp little barbs. We're going to be able to pack that polyester filling in. Initially you feel like you're not getting anywhere and after a while you'll see that all of those little fibres are lining up and it is packing down really nicely. What that means is that we can pack it down. We can also pack it into that shoulder and we can flip it around and we can pack directly into that shoulder and it means that the filling won't move. It'll stay where we put it. It's a really, really great tip for when you, even when you're filling little dolls' arms and little animals where you've got to ladder stitch the opening closed and all the stuffing's coming out at you. This is just absolutely the best, the best tip. So they're very inexpensive. You can buy a little set of them. Because I'm using it, these come in very fine little things too if you're doing very fine work. This is probably one of the bigger ones. So it needs to be quite big because we're just, we're just looking to pack that down. So you can see there that now that's quite solid. Now what I can do now, of course, is I can pack that down further. And because I like this really firm, I can add some more. And that stuffing that I just packed in, it's not going to shift. So I'm sort of not wasting my time going over the same thing. Now that I've popped that one in, I'm going to continue to pack that down until I've got it really nice and even. Now we really do want this little uh, body filled right up, right up to the top. You see how I've got my filling is right up to there and you might think how are we going to close that? But trust me, it will. It will close. We're going to put a drawstring around that and pull it in. So as firm as we can have that and the flatter we have it, the better. So you can see I'm making it a nice, flat, packed joint there. Now you can see just how firm I've managed to pack that little torso there with the use of my needle. They're going to be your best friend, these, these little felting needles. And you can find them anywhere. Most of your large uh, sewing and craft outlets will have felting needles now. It's quite a popular craft. Or you can just purchase them online. Just make sure that you get one that's a fairly uh, a heavyweight size. Um, and it's, it's really the most useful tool. So now that we have a nice, we've got it, it's nicely packed, it's nice and even, we're going to close up that neck opening. And the way that we do that, I'm using a Gudeman, I'm using a top stitching thread, which is an upholstery thread. I have it doubled. I'm using just a slim darning needle, which is quite a strong needle. I'm going to start at the back and we're going to just sew a running stitch all the way around that little neck edge, only probably around about four millimetres in from the edge. And then we'll leave a tail hanging. We don't need a knot because we're going to be tying off. I'm going to go all the way around that little neck edge. So I've sewn all the way around, come back to the start there away from each other and you can see that I can pull those threads up. I'm actually going to knot those two ends. I'm leaving my needle on for now because I'm going to go around again. So this is where you need four hands. But just get that tied off as tight as you can. I've just knotted those off and because I still have my needle I'm actually going to go around one more time and I'm going to tie off again. So I've just knotted off that second time, gone around knotted off the second time just so that it's really really secure. Our little head is going to be sewn on top of that and now we have the perfect little petite lovely firm, see all of the mobility, super strong, ready to add our animal's head. Now for the next part of the video you'll be going on to make whichever animal, whichever doll it is, this section of the video you'll see each time. So we'll move on from here and we'll start making the head. So this is my little body I've made up for my little fox. Just the same as you've just seen. This one's just made up in different fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and start making my little fox head now. So the pieces that you will need, you will need a back head piece and of course I'm using that little foxy red, the sort of a rusty colour. 
in the felt and that one is interfaced with a woven fusible interfacing and then I have my side head pieces and they are cut in an off-white or a cream I, I try and avoid white um, white felt is very um, it's very very artificial looking so something that's just just an off-white works best that those are also interface with with the fusible woven interfacing and then you'll need your little side mask pieces now they have uh, heat and bond applied because we're going to be fusing those onto the the front the sides to give us our little foxy mask there we're also going to need two pairs of little ear pieces and I'm, I've cut one in a pink for the interior of the ear and the little tan colour again and those have fusible webbing um, heat and bond on the back we're actually going to fuse those together we're not going to sew them together in the usual way so we're going to fuse those together and we're going to do a stitch around them so you need both of those ears you'll also need a little nose template now this one I have cut from felt which is interfaced I have a black interfacing so you can't see that there and that's a little template for the nose that we're actually going to stitch over so you'll also need some black embroidery thread or some pearl thread for sewing the nose and the mouth and then we will need your two little safety eyes you can use buttons if you like I like to use safety eyes for these they really uh, settle in nicely and you of course you'll need the two little backs and you'll need some threads for sewing around the little ears and just for your general construction so the first thing that we do in making the little fox head is we're going to remove our backing paper from our side mask pieces and take that one to the iron and you can see exactly where that one will sit it fits perfectly over that first pattern piece I'm going to very carefully fuse each of those into place with a hot iron and make sure you use a protective cloth you can see there that I've pressed those two side masks on and then I've taken that one to the machine and I have stitched along that mask line in a if you don't have an exact matching thread just use a thread that's slightly darker like I have here and stitch those little mask pieces into place our next step is to sew our center front face seam and you want to make sure that your little tan pieces there are lining up and the top of the head and the base of the neck you can use a clip if you like you could even uh, overcast tack that little front section into place before you stitch it if you feel more comfortable with that and I like to stitch that seam two times now once that little seam is sewn you can see that I've gone ahead and just clipped just notched that edge with my pinking shears or you can just use your little scissors and make some notches just so that will turn out well I also have changed my thread halfway down so that I'm using my darker thread on that mask section and my lighter cream on the bottom section and that just gives a better result so we're just and that is I didn't mention before that's a four millimeter seam allowance so we're going to just turn that little one through which will give us the little front of our little face I like to use my knitting needle just to push those edges right out and it's just a matter of really rolling that seam out it's quite a few layers there and you'll see you've got a nice little front face there for our little fox with that little mask section coming down so then the next step is we're going to add our little ears into place before we sew that little head together so with your little ear pieces you have your fuse, uh, your heat and bond um, on both sides and it's just a matter of taking those two little ear pieces and fusing them together with a hot iron and a protective cloth uh, be very careful as you place your iron over that that they don't shift and they will be fused into one piece 
there you see I have my little ear pieces fused together so they're just one solid piece now and we're going to sew a little blanket stitch around the entire outside edge I've already done my little pair of ears so I can show you so that's just a really nice little finish for that that ear we've got that nice marking out of the darker color I'm using a dark gray here and I am using just my favorite Gudeman extra strong upholstery thread and we're just going to come in at the base of the ear now this bottom part of the ear will be hidden within the seam so we can have that little knot just sitting there at the base there and we're just going to sew the tiniest little blanket stitch now if you're not familiar with a blanket stitch I do have a video that shows you how to sew that one in great detail and it's a tiny stitch that we're going to be doing this time probably only two millimeters so it's just blanket stitches your needle goes through both layers and your needle comes out through the loop each time keep your stitches nice and close and even and that will create a lovely little binding stitch that will work right the way around the whole top edge of each of those little ears and once we've done that which I have here there's my one little ear and my second one I'm just going to be re-threading my needle because I've left my thread on so that I can show you how we're just going to fold over that front corner of the little ear before we put it into the little fox's head because it's nice to give a bit more dim dimension to that little ear and it is only around about six or seven millimeters that little fold over and we just fold him over and it's I'm just going to stitch it into place it just makes it easier we're not fiddling with them um, not worried about it slipping when we're sewing it into that top seam of the head so I'm just going to make sure it's the same as the other ear and I'm just going to quickly stitch that one into place before we actually sew them onto the front section of the head you'd be surprised what a difference it makes just having that little fold over gives that little bit of color on the front of the ear which is really lovely now a lot of people have asked me whether you can make these little animal heads in fabric and yes of course you can I just really like the felt and it's sort of a plumper effect if you do use fabric make sure that you do interface it and um, especially because this bottom edge we leave raw and if you're making this little fox head up with fabrics you'll have to add a little uh, four millimeter seam allowance around the top edge of this ear in your pattern piece because you'll have to sew the two layers together and turn it through but otherwise absolutely you can make all of my little animal heads up in fabric so the next step now is you'll see on your pattern pieces you will have had little marks which indicate where your little ears sit and we're going to be stitching those into place matching up those marks before we put our little ears together and that's not right that's the wrong one so the little pink of our ear And you can see right at the start there where that little mark is that's where we're going to pin you can clip that one into place if you like and then it's just a matter of fitting that little one over the top of the the head there and stitching it into place that just makes it easier when we add the little back head piece we're not fighting with three three layers so I'm going to carefully just tack that one into position and then I'll do the same with the other one on the other side there I have both of my little ears stitched into place you can see how I've done that there and you have to make sure that they're exactly the same distance each of them from that center seam and you can see that when we turn that little head through those little ears will pop up like that and you can see we'll have that lovely little turnover so we're just going to pop his nose back inside out again now tuck those little ears in 
and we're going to add our back piece. So you line up your centre mark on your back head piece with your centre front seam. I like to open that little front seam and you can use clips or you can use pins but that's your most important part and then we're going to just clip that little head into place tucking that little ear in as we go and you'll find that that little headpiece will fit nicely we'll take that right down and match it up with the neck edge and we'll do exactly the same with the other side and then it's just a matter of taking that one to the machine and sewing that same four millimeter seam allowance around that whole top section we leave the bottom open for turning and I, again I like to sew that seam two times for strength. Now that I have that little seam all sewn I've been able to turn that little head through and just make sure that you go around and roll out all of those seams. You can see our little ears are sitting up nicely incorporated well into that seam. Now we need to work out our eye placement because we're using safety eyes they have to go in before we stuff the head. Um, the only way to really check your eye placement correctly and to do it evenly is to do it after we put the head together. So that just means we just have to temporarily just fill out that little head just so that we can check our eye placement. And then we will pull that stuffing out and we will pop those little eyes in. So just gently fill that one. You can see I've just filled that head just enough to be able to check my eye placement there. So I'm using little teddy bear eye placement pins. You can use just normal pins if you like. And it's just a matter of, I then just make a little hole where my pin was and use my marker just to make a spot there and then the same either side. You can even use your ruler if you like and, and check that they are the right distance apart. And then we can unstuff that head and we can add our little safety eyes before we stuff the head correctly. I have just enlarged those holes just using my awl and then the end of my knitting needle just to increase those holes so they're big enough to accommodate that little shank. And I've just popped in my first little safety eye. Now you need to be sure to push down. We've got to get right inside that little head there. You want to make sure that all of your fabric is pushed right down around that eye. And a little trick that I use for just sinking those eyes a little deeper is that I add a little piece of felt. It's got a little hole cut through it. A little bit of felt goes on first before I add my, my little clasp on the back. It just recesses those eyes a little better. And then we just add our little clamp and really push that one down. I find the end of a cotton reel works really well. Just protect that eye on the other side. And we're just gonna push that one down nice and firm and you'll see that little eye is settled in there nicely and I'll just repeat with the other eye. That my little eyes are in place I can now fill that little head out with my stuffing and I'm going to pay particular attention to the front of that little nose there. So you really want to pack that little head very very firm because we're going to be sewing it onto our little body and if it's packed very firm it's a much easier task that way and also we're going to be sewing our little nose on and we want that to be easier to do so I'm going to be doing that with my forceps my forceps will help me get that filling right into the front of the nose and fill that whole little head out so there I have my little head all nicely filled out you see that's actually quite firm 
back and front there and I've taken if you a little tip is if you can get yourself a it's a wool felting needle and it's very very useful for packing your filling in and giving it a nice firm surface you can pack it in you can add some more and you pack it pack it in again I use this one a lot for um, it just stops that filling coming out at you while you're trying to work and you can also make sure that that little muzzle, muzzle area is packed in nice and tight because we're going to be adding our little nose on the end there but first of all we're going to sew that little head onto our prepared body and it's just a matter of we're going to line up those the side seams of the head there with the side seams on the body so that we get that little head on nice and straight and it really is just a matter of going around with your pins and pinning that one into place I usually start at the front you can adjust it as you go pop those pins in right the way around the little head so there you can see I have my little head all pinned on it's a lot of pins but that keeps it all nicely in place while we're going to be stitching now sewing the little head on is quite simple once we've got it pinned into place like this so I'm using my extra strong upholstery thread and I've just come in I've tied a knot at the end and I've just come in underneath that neck layer there and just come out a little way into that little headpiece and I'm just going to make my way around with a little I probably call it a whip stitch so taking some of the body coming out on that that line and I'm going to backtrack as I go so into the body and out along that neck edge now don't worry if you're not getting your stitches too close together because we can go around this little neck edge I usually go around two or three times and you can find you can make that those stitches quite nice and neat and of course all of my little animal dolls have little neck wear that just covers that seam nicely that little neck seam so into the body and along that little neck edge there and you just make your way around and on the second time around you can fill in all the little spaces as you go you can remove your pins as you go and you'll be surprised how neat you can make that little neck edge now there you can see my little my little fox has her little head all sewn on nicely and we're going to be popping a little scarf or whatever neck adornment that you're going to pop on there next step is to add our little nose and so we're going to first glue that one on now the size of the little nose template uh, works according to your seam allowance so if your seam allowance you've taken your seam allowance a little deeper than mine you might want to trim your little nose template down just a little bit so I'm just using a clear craft glue it's just a clear hobby and craft fabric glue something suitable for fabric and the placement of this little nose is that we're going to cover the top section of the nose here and then we're going to fold it down to here so the little point is sort of going to sit midway there and then we're going to fold that little top section over and you'll have to do a little bit of holding here while that little one is drying it may feel like that's not going to happen but it will And then it's just a matter of molding that little felt piece into shape over the end of that nose sometimes the palm of your hand works very well the heat of your hand will help dry that glue so it's just a matter of keep pressing that into place and you can even throw a couple of pins in either side 
so I've just popped a couple of pins in there and that little nose template you see is moulded nicely to the end there and we'll just let that dry for at least 10 or 15 minutes you want that to be quite dry before we start sewing so there you can see my little nose template is all dried and it's sitting nicely in place there so I have my medium sized doll's needle I have threaded that with my pearl thread, my black pearl thread. I have a knot at the end. I've put the two ends through like that with my double thread so that if I make a mistake while I'm sewing this nose, I can get my needle out and then re-thread it. So that's why we do that. And we're going to start at the back of the head, anywhere at the back of the head, and we're going to come all the way through to the front and we're going to want to come out just below, just below that little point there. So probably about three millimeters below it, right out through that seam line. That could take a little bit of juggling with our needle, but we will get there. You see my needles just come straight through there. And we're gonna pull that one right the way through and in the back there, we're going to take our awl and we're just going to make that little hole just a little bit bigger so that we can just pop our knot into the back of the head there and that will be nicely hidden and that will, little knot will hold behind that nose there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our first stitch and we're going to go all the way up and come in and we've got that nice center line there to line it up with and we're going to cover that that whole template with our stitches make sure that they're not twisted and we're going to dive in right in the center and our needle is going to come out just at the base there to one side because what we're going to be doing is covering this whole template with our long stitches. There you can see my needles come out just at the side there. So there's our first stitch and my needles just come out there. We're just going to pull that one all the way through. Hold those little stitches into place. And you'll see that we get both of our threads and we check that they're both pulled down firmly. Then we take our stitch, line it up next to those and you can see that we're just going to make our way across all the way to that side, to the edge of that side. Lining up our stitches as we go, always making sure that when you pull those threads up that they're not twisted as we lay them flat there. So you can see I've covered half of the nose and I've, as I'm laying my last stitch on this side, I've taken my needle through and come out at the base again and then I will repeat with the other side. So now I've covered the other side. My final stitch is going in at the top of the nose there and that final stitch will just sit there and we come out at the edge of the mouth. So at the at corner of the mouth where we want the mouth to be, you can actually test it by pulling your thread around your needle Just so, and you can see how your little mouth will sit because we're going to come in behind that little stitch there. So you want to make just enough of a little smile. A little fox mouth goes a fair way back and that one, that position will be exactly where we want it. So we pull that last stitch in. Again, making sure that final stitch, those threads 
by nice and flat. Pulling them both in. And then we're just going to take our needle behind those first two stitches that we made. We're not taking any of the felt, we're just going behind the stitches. And again, we want to make sure that our little threads aren't twisted. Pull that one in. Check our little fox's smile and then we're going to go in at exactly the same distance from that centre seam. Check your little smile is right and we dive into the fabric and come out at the back of the head. So we've just pulled in that little smile, give it a nice little tug, come out at the back of the head and we can just pass through that little head a couple of times and down at the base of the neck and just knot that one off. And there we have her completed little face. And now she just needs some clothes. So here is our little fox doll, she's all finished, she's dressed in her little jacket, you can also find the video for the jacket, how to make the jacket, that one is up there too. Also you've got the other alternatives, you might want to make your little fox in just a little neck ruffle and a little skirt like little bunny here, or maybe you want to make a little boy version and we have, I have the little overalls and the little scarf, so lots there for you to choose from, why don't you make the whole gang? That'd be awesome. I hope you've enjoyed making this little girl along with me today. Well, thank you for joining me and making Little Miss Fox today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. Remember to subscribe because you can check out my little bunny doll and my little bear doll. And of course, all of the other free patterns that I have for you. I will be adding to the, the little animal doll collection as well. So you can all look forward to that. Please comment and let me know what you would like to see, what you'd like me to make or design for you and I will definitely endeavour to do my best. In the meantime everybody, when something good comes your way, remember just to pay it forward because we all can. And until next time, it's Hero from me.